what opportunities are available to me in ministry and can Southern Seminary prepare me uh, as a woman for ministry? Well, let me start at the last part of that question. And uh, again, glad to receive it from California. Uh, we have uh, a larger number of women studying at Southern Seminary in, in our programs of study than ever before. We've had a, an increase of over 114% in the last 25 years. At the same time, we've been always clear uh, about our biblical convictions concerning God's uh, patter of, uh, pattern of, of uh, order and ministry in the church. And, uh, you know, the Baptist Faith and Message, which is uh, our denominational confession of faith, puts it this way. Uh, that is, that, uh, that God has called both men and women to serve in the church, but the office of pastor is, is limited to men, is called by the Holy Spirit. And we do believe that's not just an accident. It's not an arbitrary teaching. It's not separated from the totality of Scripture. It's grounded in creation. Uh, it's sustained by an entire biblical theology. There, there are different roles for men and women, both equally made in the image of God and, and in many cases, equally gifted uh, in, uh, in, in God's gifts. But, uh, but with different roles uh, in, in the church uh, and in the home. And, uh, and so we're unapologetically committed to what's called complementarianism, to the, to the fact that there's a distinction in role that, uh, that's not just historical, it's not arbitrary, uh, it's rooted in God's plan for His church. And, uh, and, and some of that's beyond our understanding. Part of it is revealed uh, in, uh, in, in watching a rightly ordered church operate. And, uh, and, and, and seeing God's plan lived out. Uh, it's very clear in Scripture, uh, so clear that uh, in order to get around the, the New Testament passages that speak of the restriction of the office of pastor and the teaching office to men, uh, you've, got to, you, you've simply got to violate Scripture, uh, to be honest, and, uh, and, and in so doing, set very bad patterns that will not be reflected only in this issue. It's not an accident that so many of the denominations and churches that have moved to ordain women to the pastorate are also the very same churches that are now uh, joining the LGBTQ revolution as well. It's a similar hermeneutic. It's a similar approach to Scripture. But all that being said, uh, look at the New Testament and see how both Jesus and the Apostle Paul honor women serving in the church and, and, and women serving the cause of the gospel. Uh, look at the priority Jesus puts on emphasizing the faithfulness of so many women, the faithful witness of so many women, uh, the faithful service of, of so many women. Look at the Apostle Paul when he thanks believers in the various churches. Uh, just take uh, Romans chapter 16 and, and look at how Paul thanks specific women for service. He cites them elsewhere uh, in his ministry, and uh, I find that just incredibly encouraging. In Titus, especially in Titus 2, uh, we find the, uh, the exhortation given to, uh, to men and to women uh, that uh, younger men are to respect older men, uh, older men are to teach younger men, but uh, older women are also to teach younger women. Uh, there's a role of women teaching women, and the age there is not inconsequential in Titus 2, but the most important thing is to recognize that there is an important role for women teaching, teaching women in the church. And by the way, uh, that means that I would want any woman who's God called to that kind of ministry to have the very highest level of theological education, the very highest level of, uh, of, of the study of the Scripture. So for that reason, uh, every degree program at Southern Seminary is fully open to women. And, uh, and, and this institution, I'm just going to be very honest because this is, I believe, to God's glory. It's a testimony to how God honors His Word. Uh, 25 years ago, this institution was in a very unbiblical position on the question of women in ministry. And uh, when I was a seminary student uh, back in the early 1980s, all the way through when I became president in 1993, uh, this institution really put itself on the line to, uh, to I, I believe, violate Scripture by arguing that women could and should be pastors and teaching elders in churches. And, uh, and then when, when we recovered the institution, we made very clear uh, our confessional responsibility made very clear our complementarian convictions, made very clear what we believe teach, uh, the Scripture taught and, and so as to be obeyed, people said, you're not going to have any students and you're certainly not going to have any women students. But here's the reality. Uh, as I said, we've had a 114% increase just in women students. Uh, we have more women doctoral students now than, than, than we did 25 years ago. God's just honored this beyond anything we could have imagined. And I think it's because we're honoring His Word, and we're honoring women 
who are called as, as uh, servants of the church. Look, let me tell you, on the mission field right now, there are places a woman can go that a man can't go. And in much of the world, women are able to have a teaching ministry to other women who otherwise would be far outside uh, the reach of the Christian church. Uh, women can often go where a man can't go. And, and there's more to that equation as well. In the mission field, let's be honest, women are responding more faithfully than men are. Uh, the imbalance, the gender imbalance on the mission field is just another sign of the fact that many women are being faithful to a call to missions that, uh, that young men are not being uh, so faithful in answering. And, uh, and, and, and as, a, as, as a young Christian, uh, as a boy, before I became a, a believing Christian, I had women who poured their lives uh, into all kinds of uh, programs at the church, and, uh, and, and included Bible teaching and vacation Bible school and, and all the rest. Uh, I'm not saying it's all about children, but I am saying uh, oftentimes um, that's just a very important dimension of how God has gifted women and, uh, and, and equipped women in the church. But uh, women teaching women, why would we think that would require any less ability or knowledge or scholarship or devotion than, uh, than a man teaching the congregation? Um, I, I, I think that's a fundamental misunderstanding. So I appreciate so much the question, and I'm excited to tell you we are eager to receive women as students. We have programs uh, ranging all across uh, the callings that are are, uh, are, are biblically defined. And uh, for instance, uh, we have women uh, who, are, uh, who are vastly populating our uh, programs in biblical counseling, uh, in missions, and, uh, but also uh, in uh, preparing to teach the Bible to women. And, uh, and, and so I hope you find great encouragement in that. Well, I'm encouraged by your question.